I've already poured $60,000 into your happiness, yet here you are referring to me as nothing more than a wallet or an ATM. We never asked for your help, Max lamented to his wife, Lily, who responded with a scoff and a sneer. If it bothers you so much, why not cut off the payments? I can handle it myself, Lily retorted, her tone dismissive. Max couldn't believe even his own son, who he had raised, would treat him this way. After footing the bill for a $20,000 engagement party and a $40,000 wedding, he felt used and disrespected. They only see me as a cash cow, he thought bitterly. I must have failed as a parent. Well, I won't let them push me around anymore. Max resolve hardened as he faced his son's threats. I've heard you loud and clear, you replied calmly. But Max's son, Max Jr., wasn't done. Are you sure about that? You know we won't let you see your grandchild right, he threatened. Max squared his shoulders. You don't have to. I'd be more than happy to stop the payments. From here on out, it was a steep fall for Max and Lily, who had treated me like a money tree. My name is Chloe. I'm 56 years old, navigating life solo since my husband passed away 12 years ago. Between my job and raising my two children, I've always had my hands full. I hold an executive position at a decent company I've been with since before marriage, earning me the label of a career woman in the eyes of the world. The children who were in high school when their father passed have now graduated college and entered the workforce, which brings me some relief. I just hope they'll settle down and start their own family soon. Lost in these musings, I lived alone in the comfortable condominium I once shared with my children. Then one day, Max called, announcing, I want you to meet the woman I plan to marry. Delighted, I agreed. Max, now 28, works as a salesman for a large corporation. Despite his past as a bit of a playboy, it seemed he was finally maturing. On the day of the introduction, Max arrived with his fiancée, Lily. Mom, it's been a while. Meet my fiancée, Lily. It's a pleasure to meet you. I'm eager to get to know you. Max introduced Lily, who worked as a receptionist at his company. She possessed a striking beauty, and I couldn't help but feel proud of my son for finding someone like her. Congratulations to you both. I'm here to support your happiness. I beamed, our conversation flowing smoothly. As we chatted, the topic of their engagement party arose. We're planning to have an engagement party soon, and I need to start making arrangements. Mom, could you cover the $20,000 cost for the party? Max asked. I was taken aback, as I had expected the average cost to be around $10,000. However, seeing their joyous expressions, I couldn't bring myself to refuse. Of course, it's a joyous occasion. I agreed wholeheartedly. Later, my eldest daughter Mia came to visit. Mia, how's work going? The deadline was yesterday, I inquired. I'm managing well, so don't worry, Maya replied. She worked as a manga artist, and though she hadn't yet achieved a major success, she had her own series and was able to make a living from her passion. By the way, Mom, Max is getting married, isn't he? She asked, changing the subject. Yes, he came by the other day with his fiancée, Lily, to introduce her, and they've asked for $20,000 for the engagement party, I explained to Mia. Wow. $20,000 is the hefty sum for sure, Maya remarked. It's not just for the party. Apparently, they're planning to use it for their wedding funds and to give gifts of gratitude. Is that how it works? I questioned. And so, on the day of the engagement party, I handed over the promised $20,000. Lily and her parents looked delighted as they accepted the money. We'll use this to start our new life together, they declared, stashing away the cash. There were no gifts of gratitude as I had expected, but I reassured myself that this was typical of engagement parties. As long as they were happy, it was fine. However, a few days later, Max dropped a bombshell. I won a grand wedding with lots of guests and connections invited, maybe around 250 people. That sounds wonderful, I replied, trying to mask my surprise. And with that, Mom, I'd like to ask you to cover the upfront cost of the wedding, Max said. What? I have to pay. I thought weddings were typically funded by the couple themselves. 
I responded, feeling a sense of disbelief. I'm counting on you, Mom. It's quite common for parents to cover the wedding expenses. Besides, didn't I contribute a significant amount for the engagement party? Lely's parents aren't in a position to help financially, and I promised to repay you for the wedding gift, Max explained reluctantly. As I opened the bill Max had brought, my shock was palpable. The amount stated was a staggering $40,000. The idea of such an upfront cost made my head spin. Just how extravagant were their wedding plans? Wait a minute, isn't this a bit excessive? Why not plan a wedding within your means? I questioned. It's a once-in-a-lifetime event, and Lily doesn't want to compromise. Besides, don't you want Lily's parents to witness how happy she is? Max countered, leaving me feeling cornered. Feeling pressured, I couldn't bring myself to refuse. All right, it's indeed a joyous once-in-a-lifetime occasion, I conceded. Upon seeing my reluctant consent, Max smiled and thanked me before leaving the room. Later, I transferred the hefty upfront cost of $40,000 to the wedding venue. It pained me to use the money I had diligently saved for my retirement, but I convinced myself it was for my child's happiness. Two months later, on the wedding day, the venue surpassed my expectations in luxury. Mia and I had arrived early in the morning to change into our dresses and prepare our hair. As I approached the door to the bride and groom's dressing room, I unintentionally overheard their conversation. I can't believe we're having such a lavish wedding, all thanks to mom, Lily exclaimed. Absolutely. She gave us $20,000 for the engagement party, and I even managed to buy a new bag. She's like a great wallet, more like an ATM. Let's keep withdrawing from it, Max. Max chimed in. That's rather harsh. Mia and I listened in disbelief. Lily continued gleefully, I bet if we ask her nicely, she'll cover the rest of the wedding costs, right? Of course she will. Leave it to me. Then we can use the wedding gift for a honeymoon trip to Hawaii. And why not bring my parents along? Perhaps we could even buy a high-rise apartment for our new home, Max added enthusiastically. That sounds perfect. Let's get my mother to cover the cost. She does have the money, after all, Lily agreed. My hand trembled as I raised it to knock on the door. Sensing my distress, Mia gently led me away. With steady breaths, I squeezed Mia's hand, resting on my shoulder and whispered, Mia, there's something I need you to look into once the ceremony starts. Of course, Mom. Leave it to me. And so, Max and Lily's wedding commenced. As I watched their vows in the chapel and listened to the toasts at the reception, my mind lingered on their earlier conversation. Presenting the groom's mother, Chloe, the MC announced, and as the spotlight fell on me, all I could manage was a bow. Maya returned from her rounds of toasting and joined me. Mom, I checked with Lily's relatives. Both of her parents are perfectly healthy, Maya informed me. That's terrible. We need to address this. I'll stand by you, I assured Mia, as it was time for our first wardrobe change. Lily exited first, followed by Max. Now the groom will make his exit. Accompanying him is his mother, Chloe, who raised him single-handedly. The announcement was made, prompting me to walk down the aisle to meet Max. Max, a little tipsy and in high spirits, declared to the MC's microphone, This is my amazing mom. Keeping a composed expression, I walked beside Max, exiting the hall, and headed straight to the dressing room where Maya was waiting. Max, there's something I need to discuss with you, Mia began. What is it, sis? Make it quick. I need to change and get back. Max replied curtly as he started to undress. Mia and I exchanged a glance, both unsettled by his demeanor. How could he speak about mom that way? Huh? You were eavesdropping? Well, whatever, Max shrugged, dismissing Maya's concern, just as Lily entered the room, already in her wedding attire. Mother-in-law, sister-in-law, what's going on? Lily inquired, noticing the tension in the room. Mia confronted Lily. We've discovered that your parents are healthy and have stable jobs. Why are you making our mom foot the bill for everything? What's going on? Lily reacted dramatically, exclaiming, Oh, was this some sort of sister-in-law bullying? How terrifying. My patience were thin at Lily's dismissive tone. 
I've already shelled out $60,000, hoping for your happiness, and yet you treat people like they're just wallets, ATMs. What kind of attitude is that? I snapped, frustration evident in my voice. Lily merely chuckled as if it were a joke. Acting all self-important over such a paltry sum. We don't owe you anything. Plus, it's customary for the groom's parents to cover the wedding costs, isn't it? Lily retorted. But you lied about your parents' health to splurge on a new bag. And yes, I overheard. It's a terrible habit to eavesdrop, Maya interjected. Mind your tongue, Mia. Lily snapped back, visibly irritated. She then turned her attention to Mia, saying, I won't take scolding from an older sister who's still single at 30, pursuing some eccentric career as a manga artist. Your nerdy tendencies are probably why you're still unmarried. Max chimed in, mocking Maya further. That's right, you're a lost cause when it comes to marriage, sis. Infuriated by their disrespect, I attempted to reprimand them, but Max laughed it off. If you're going to speak like that, why don't you try cutting off the payments? After all, I'm an elite, he jeered. I can handle it just fine. It would be a pity to lose the cash cow, Lily remarked, her tone dripping with sarcasm. I felt a pang of disappointment. I had contributed $20,000 for the engagement party and $40,000 for the wedding, and yet this was how they chose to treat me? No appreciation, only cruelty. Doubts crept in about where I might have gone wrong in raising my son. Enough was enough. I refuse to be manipulated any longer. I've heard everything you've said. Are you sure about that? If you don't cooperate, you won't get to see your grandchild, Max threatened. But I stood my ground firmly. That's all right. There's no need to bring them around. I'll gladly cease the payments. Max and Lily stared at me, stunned into silence. I'm cutting ties here. I wish you both the best. I declared as I took Mia's hand, and we made our exit from the venue. The sounds of revelry from the reception echoed in the background as we left. A month later, while enjoying a quiet moment with Mia over tea at home, the intercom buzzed loudly. Oh, Ma, it's Max. What should we do? Mia asked. Let him in, dear, I replied calmly. Max, whom I hadn't seen in a month, appeared at the door looking weary and disheveled. Why the sudden visit, Max? I inquired, curious about his unexpected appearance. Mom, have you received the bill for the wedding venue? Why haven't you paid it yet? Max questioned. Oh, the remaining balance, right. It was $45,000. Yes, it arrived, but I don't feel obligated to pay it, I replied. Don't be like that. We didn't receive many wedding gifts in the end and couldn't cover the bill. Now we're in debt, Maya interjected with a laugh. From what I gathered at the wedding, it seems you two have gained quite a negative reputation. Max, you've been throwing your weight around at work, taking on careless tasks. And Lily, you've been belittling other women, flaunting your appearance to snag a husband. It's no wonder people were reluctant to give wedding gifts to people like you, I explained, addressing their behavior. Hey, sis, stay out of this, Max snapped, visibly angered. Mia remained composed, responding, Oh, how intimidating. Yet you mock me for being a failed manga artist or an otaku. Did you know that my manga was one of the top-selling Tiohu manga this year? It's even set to be adapted into an anime and a movie next year. Needless to say, I'm in a much better financial position than you with your debts. Maya revealed her successful career. At that moment, Max's attention was drawn to something. Hey, sis, is that? Yes, exactly, Mia confirmed, proudly displaying the ring on her left ring finger. I'm engaged to my editor. He's a prominent figure at a major publishing house. A real success. So we'll be able to take care of mom on our own. We don't need your help. We never expected our children to support us. Thank you, Mia. We're planning a wedding, but we'll manage everything ourselves. Mom, you're invited, but Max, you needn't bother, I asserted. Turning to a bewildered Max, I stated firmly, Do you understand now? Don't bother us again. With Mia by my side, we guided Max towards the front door with determination. Please, Mom, and you too, sis, Max pleaded. Ah, I just thought of something. What would you even give us money for? I interrupted, 
noticing Max's hopeful expression as he turned around. I mentioned that director at your wedding. Turns out I didn't realize it at the time, but he's actually a client of my company. It seemed you were extending all those undue privileges because of my association. However, I've instructed them to cease such favors, I explained. I had no idea about this, Max began, but I cut him off. Please just deal with it yourself. Goodbye, I said firmly. Mia and I escorted Max out and securely locked the door behind him. Max continued to cause a commotion outside, but after some time of ignoring him, the noise eventually subsided. A year has passed since that incident. Immediately afterward, I made the decision to sell the house to prevent any future visits from Max and Lily. I purchased an apartment with elderly services, ensuring a comfortable living environment for my old age. According to a neighbor from my condo, Max and Lily showed up and caused a scene, questioning my absence. This only affirmed the wisdom of my choice. As for Max and Lily, they'd abandoned their aspirations for a luxury high-rise apartment and now reside in a cramped space. Max, it appears, faced emotion following a review of his actions. Perhaps wounded by the loss of his elite status, Max's behavior has only worsened over time. It's surprising he hasn't been terminated from his job yet. Lily, who quit her job upon marriage, continued her extravagant spending for a while, but their finances quickly dwindled. Despite their debts, Lily's lavish habits remain unchanged, and her parents persistently demand money. Allegedly, they argue daily. I can only hope that they come to understand the value of hard-earned money and learn to appreciate those around them. However, that might be too much to ask of them. Thankfully, I still maintain a close bond with Mia. Her husband is a kind-hearted man who treats me with great respect, and they are expecting a baby. I eagerly anticipate spoiling my beloved daughter and grandchild. The thought of their arrival motivates me to keep going every day.